Hey friends, welcome back to Mastering Post-Production Sound. My name is Joel D. Catalan. I'm an Emmy-nominated sound re-recording mixer and industry coach. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about baseline automation and why it's so important to make sure you have one parameter checked so you don't wipe out any information and lose all of your automation in your project. So in this video, I'm going over a template that I am currently adjusting for a new project. And I came about something and I wanted to pass this information to you. So I'm currently going through my backgrounds, my facts, and I'm, I'm kind of just making sure all the EQs are good, the routing, the verbs, the sends, things like that. And what, what I remembered is I forget this every single time I'm readjusting a template. Now you'll see right here in these particular uh, uh, inserts right here, I'm working on my my BBGs right now, my uh, food group of, of B. I go A, B, Gs, B, B, Gs, C, B, Gs. And each group of B, Gs, I have one through eight mono and one through eight stereo. Well, we're gonna talk about EQ. So you see, I have my Pro Q here and I have a default, this is what I call my JDC, my initials, a uh, default seven band, okay, and it's you just it's just very simply just a tiny bit of a of a of a roll off here on on the low end and the high end. It's very standard, okay, and then I can go in there and I can adjust what I want. Well, I am starting from scratch here, and what I forgot was when I'm inserting a plugin. We'll just go from scratch here. Let's so there's the the fab filter, and when I'm going to be doing a lot of of automation with EQs and stuff, I have to make sure that I remember that I set a baseline automation. Now, if I go here and I just call up my default EQ here, this is gonna be great. This can be fine. And if I go in there and I am mixing away and I'm, oh, that's a bad one right there. And I, you know, I'm getting some EQ here and I'm gonna, you know, take out some low end or something like that, and I like that, and I, I go ahead and I write that automation, what's going to happen is that automation is going to be written for the whole entire show. Actually, it's not going to be written. It's just going to be stagnant there. And the reason it's going to stay there, and the next time I go to a scene and I want to do it again, it's going to not go back to my default here. It's not going to be, you know, here at my default. And the reason it's not is because this little box right here, do you see that? And and if you hug, ho hover over there, it is the plugin automation enable. And you click that little box, you're gonna see right here all the parameters for my particular plugin. In this case, it's the Pro Q3. I am at the time of this recording, I, have, I am not in the Pro Q4 yet. I hear awesome things about it. Maybe that's another video from another time when I grab that. But you'll see, do you, do you see all these different bands and different parameters that I can plug, I can automate my plugin? None of them are on this side of the box. And what I mean is when I go later and I decide to, you know, EQ and I wonder like, why doesn't, why doesn't, why isn't everything snapping back to what I have to my default? It's because none of these are automatable. And do you see here when I highlight this, I can add it over here to be automated? Well, I need to make sure I select all and add all. Now, with this particular EQ, all these parameters are automatable, okay? Let's see, you see plugin automation. It's pretty simple. I'm gonna hit okay. So now, let's just see if we can emulate this just for the sake of, of a demo here. Now, um, let's make sure, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and for this particular section, let's see. Um, yeah, we're going to do BGB. I'm just going to go ahead and write just a tiny bit of baseline here. Usually what I'll do is I'll go to the hour, okay, hour one. And let's say I'm working on, I just go for a big chunk there. There's a long chunk of 13 hours. I'm going to go ahead and write my baseline automation for my EQ. And since I have, oops, since I have this particular set grouped, okay, I'm gonna make sure I have that there. I've selected that, oop, there we go. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and write it. Okay, I'm going to write to this whole selection, write automation to selection. Boom. Yes, the preview has been written. No problem. We want that. Okay. Now you'll see in this section here, if I go to that EQ, you'll see that the baseline automation automation is there. Now if I want to go ahead while I'm in preview, I'm working on a scene. Let's say I do some you know, some automation here with that EQ. Over here, there's like a big, you know, uh, hum or something, and I notch it out, right? But I only want this for a particular section, okay? Let's just show you what I'm talking about. Let's call it um, this section right here, right? Let's just say, well, I'm gonna write that there, okay? Yes, we know that. And now check this out. Let's bring that EQ up. We're gonna see that EQ, once I get past this section, it's going to snap out of this and go back to my default EQ. Okay, let's take a look. Boom, you see it, there it goes. It snaps out, right? It finally snaps out back to my default. So if I want, and that's the way I, I, I do all my automation, all my automation is going to be have a baseline automation. It's completely already set. So all my effects, my Foley, my background, if I'm if I'm mixing dialogue and music, it's all going to have a baseline. None of it will, will act that way. It won't snap back to my default like like we like it just did right now, unless the plugin automation is told to include all these parameters when I do automate. Okay. Now what happens is in this particular one, let's make a marker. I'll show you. Let's see if I could show you. Um, Let's get into the default there, right here. We're gonna put a marker here, here, and we'll go for, yeah, up into there. Okay, just a small little section I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you what happens when we don't have, when we remove that, okay, we're gonna remove it and say, okay. When we don't, and let's just say I, I call this, this baseline automation, I'm gonna go ahead and in preview, I'm gonna say, oh, okay, I'm working on a scene, I'm gonna notch this out, I'm gonna cut some of this out, all right, so now I'm gonna write it for this particular part. I'm gonna say, okay, I'll write it, no problem. So now what's gonna happen is when I go there and I wanna clip out of it, it's gonna not go back, do you see? I'm like, wait a second, well, what's going on? Well, if I'm not paying attention and I go to another food group and later on I come back and I go back in preview and I do another, let's let's do another, like, oh, let me, let me, um, let me just, uh, do some other weird kind of EQ. Okay, and now in this section, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write that automation. I hit okay. Guess what just happened? What just happened is I've written that EQ and guess what? This section right here where I thought, right? Where I thought I was doing a cool EQ move here and then it came back to it later is now gone because I did not have these plugin parameters set over here to be automated. So again, we have to have all of these selected. I hit okay, I, I, I do them all. I mean, you can do an individual one if you want, but any template I have, I have all, every parameter is automatable so that I can um, not worry about it. So now, now, now I wanna fix this mess, right? Because I've messed up and I've royally screwed up. Well. Hopefully you haven't done it in a project, you know, where you've, you've uh, been working like this for a long time. But I'm just going to go ahead, go back to my default. There it is. And I'm just going to write it to the to the section that I wanted. And actually, I think it's I think I'm just going to have to do it right there. I'll just go like there, right there. I'm going to write. Boom. And now it's fine. Now you'll see we're, we're back in business. OK, now um, I like to set this baseline automation from the very beginning. So again, you can go to the beginning of your session. My session happens just because I'm working on this. Session starts at zero. I actually don't like that. Um, let's go to the hour. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and from the hour, bring up my session setup here. And I'm gonna start the session at before the hour. So zero, zero, 58, maybe let's just call it 58. Okay, 58 minutes. So now I have plenty of headroom before I start the hour. Okay, here's the hour again. Boom, we'll just call this hour one. Boom, there we go. Let's, let's get rid of that. Now you'll see back at hour one, I have plenty of space here to 
do anything I want to do. Okay, you will have a two pop here at 59.58. And depending on you know your editors, now you have plenty of time so you're not getting some kind of weird error when you import session from an editor. Maybe they started at 59, maybe they started at 58.30. So 58 for me just gets it in the clear for everybody. But I just saw something that I want I want to bring to your attention because I, I, I um, remembered that, there it is. Do you see that right there? Guess what? Remember that we, we thought we wiped out the automation, the baseline automation, but guess what? Because I had this written before the whole entire thing, this is still written. So for, in order for me to actually get rid of all this, and this is basically how I start my writing my baseline automation, I'll go to the beginning of my session, 58. I'll zoom out, and I'm just going to freaking grab the whole entire thing, okay? I'm going to highlight the whole entire 24 hours or whatever I have there. And now I'm going to set my baseline automation to my default here, right? And, of course, remember, I've already had all the plug-in automation there. I'm going to hit OK. And now in pre I'm in preview, mind you. I know that I'm in preview the whole entire time, okay? And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to manually write that automation to the selection. Boom. Hit OK. And now... You'll see that. Well, let's let's bring that back back up here. You'll see that as I tab through the whole session, it's no longer there. I don't see this weird wacky out of automation that I uh, created. So, if you are working in big sessions, and this would work for music too, you know, really, if 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 you have a need to um to have plugins automate all the time like that. That's the way you would want to do it. But spe specifically for post-production sound, I need to make sure that my automation is set for the whole entire time. So I'm going to go through as I'm building this template and I'm going to go ahead and make sure all the effects are properly set with their baseline automation, all the backgrounds and all the Foley. And so I just thought it'd be pretty interesting to just show you because what happens and has happened to me in the past because every project and every template that I work on has some tweaking. You know, I like I'm going back kind of to an older kind of template that I've worked on. Um, but some are more elaborate and a, and a little bit different, you know. Um, and so I remember one time going through a session and realizing that this EQ stuff wasn't didn't have any of this baseline and and that probably happened mainly. I think that happened when I went from Pro Q two to three. So I was I was literally like, you know, switching these out here, and I thought I'd had it set and everything because I had a I had um, assigned all the new proper inserts to the Pro Q three, and as I went along, I discovered it in a project I did not have all of this selected. So make sure that your plugin automation has all the parameters you want to automate moving forward if you want to not wipe out any kind of previous EQ moves or other plugin automation. Okay, that's a very important thing. So it happens, you know, we're not perfect. And this is why it's great. We don't, you know, it's good to make mistakes because we learn from them, right? So I hope that was helpful to you. If you like videos like this, please let me know in the comments because I'll do a lot more of these things if you find it helpful. Again, thanks for checking out this channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I think the last time I checked, it was like over 65% of the people who are watching this video are not subscribed. So do yourself a favor and support the channel by clicking subscribe. I'm happy you're here, friend. I'll catch you in one of these other videos over here on the side or in next week's episode.